I welcome you all for today's seminar. I would like to request Dr. M. Sivadiyanidhi to give welcome address for today's seminar. Shall I? Yes, sir. Hello, and a warm welcome to everyone who joined with us for today's webinar. This is M. Sivadayanidhi, one of the organizing secretary delivering the welcome address. We are delighted and honored to host a seminar on photochemistry. This seminar is principally designed to introduce some of the basic concepts and to enhance the scientific knowledge during the unprecedented situation of COVID outbreak on digital platform. I would like to thank our principal madam for the enthusiasm and energy she carries for the student community. Personality as a whole is a combination of character and appearance of an individual. Leadership is not the position, it is the quality. It includes our HOD, Dr. G. Rajagopa, who laid the foundation stone for this house of webinar. It is a moment of great privilege and honor for me to extend hearty welcome to our honorable chief guest of the day, Dr. J. Nityanandan, a man of symbolizing knowledge and wisdom. We thank you, sir, for acknowledging our invitation. He is a young, vibrant, dynamic, reverberating personality who has a vast scientific knowledge on photochemistry. We are also pleased to welcome our admin cum moderator, who is a young mystic of our times, he who always sits on the lap of Google Goddess with an omnipotent tool of internet and does meditation for a number of days in the web world to make this venture possible at your doorsteps, without whom this is not possible at all. He is none other than Dr. P. Vijayan, my humble pronouns to his effortless enthusiasm. I would like to express my appreciation to my colleagues and fellow teachers who joined the hands to make this event meaningful. I express my heartfelt gratitude to my dear students who sincerely committed to this event. Coming to the topic of the day, exciting photochemistry. It is not photochemistry. The word exciting always pondering me. Then I understood the significance of it. Fascinating life energy on the universe is because of photochemistry. The basic existential life force is due to photosynthesis, which is a great photochemistry of concern, which is paramount importance for the world to exist. Nature's photochemistry is always humble and simple. It is its greatness. That is why Einstein once said, photon is bigger than the biggest and smaller than the smallest. He also added, even darkness does not destroy the light. It only redefines it. He said, all the science is nothing more than the refinement of everyday thinking. He also extended, scientists or the observers of nature are the kind of mystic seekers in the act of constant prayer. In early days, photons are largely related to physics but little of chemistry. But after the advent of spectroscopy and photochromatic radiation, it is made possible to picturize the reaction mechanisms of wide variety of bio and synthetic molecules to address the life matter. In the pandemic period, even the phototherapy, one of the potential treatment of coronavirus is a new perspective, which is nothing but a branch of medical photochemistry. Ultra sensitive sterilizer is a technique which is used to eliminate the pathogens on the electronic gadgets is also a new technique which is nothing but a branch of photochemistry in the healthcare industry. Anything life force which is on the universe, you name it, it exists because of the photochemistry. With this intro, we are blessed to have an amazing and wonderful scientist of our times, Dr. J. Nityanandan, a senior scientist from Material Chemistry Division of Advanced Material, CSIR, National Chemical Laboratory, Pune, India, who is not only the great researcher, but also an excellent teacher. We enjoy your listening, listening to him this afternoon. Once again, I welcome the speaker to the House of Knowledge to share his experience and wisdom. Thank you. Have a nice day. Now, shall I call upon Dr. S.P. Raja Singh to introduce the speaker? Thank you. Good morning, one and all. Respected principal, Dr. C.V. Deepa, our beloved head of the department, Dr. G. Rajagobal, 
and my dear faculty colleagues and dear participants very good morning for joining us for this webinar i am happy and it's my pleasure to introduce dr j nidyanandan he did his ug degree from ayanadar janaya mal college sivagasi and he passed out with gold medal he did his master's degree in pondicherry university there he qualified gate examination and also ugc csr net examinations and he joined for his doctoral studies in the great institute indian institute of science under the supervision of professor jan jayaraman where he did all his uh, exciting organic chemist he is always very much fond of organic chemists so he explored himself to derive some of the dendrimers and their studies after spending 6 years in indian institute of science he moved to united states for his postdoctoral studies he joined with professor v ramamurthy to work on some of photochemistry in uh, university of miami he spent almost 5 years over there and he exploited his organic chemist thrust in photochemistry field then he came back to join the national chemical laboratory in this time he also got an offer from uh, european union for his uh, mary curie international incoming fellowship so he has been honored with that fellowship but, but he joined in the ncl pune and right now he is doing lot of work on uh, dye molecule especially on squarine dyes and supramolecular chemistry and he is doing organic frameworks without uh, metals on auto after uh, finding its uh, opto electronic applications particularly on dye sensitized solar cells so with this small introduction now he joined in 2012 as a senior scientist in national ncl pune now he is a, from 2016 onwards he is a principal scientist and he is heading a big group and doing lot of research in the organic field particularly on the dye sensitized solar cells and opto electronics materials with this small introduction i would like to welcome on behalf of the participants and uh, our organizing committee and our head of the department dr j nidyanandan to deliver his lecture and enlighten the participants with his uh, expertise in organic chemistry and photochemistry thank you i welcome dr nidyanandan so thank you uh, so can i go online yeah so good morning to all uh it's nice to be here in this pandemic situation uh, even though we are uh, having this situation but i'm sure that with this all this online platform the learning the practice of learning is something is kept going so i welcome you all and i also thank sincerely uh the principal madam deepa kalas professor rajagopal the hodi of the department and the doctor Raja Singh, Dr. Shiva Daya Dini, Dr. Vijay, for their wonderful, wonderful coordination uh, to make this event to happen. Okay. So, anyway, let me. Uh, I will talk about in general about a, a photochemistry and why it is useful and uh, why one has to understand to solve one of the nation's important, uh, nation not only world's important problem on energy. So, I kept this topic very general. so that you know i am also the content also will be very general to everyone so before going to that uh, you know so this year i am given my email id in case if you have any doubt or if you want to explore some of the such possibilities in the future you can always you are welcome to contact me anytime okay. uh now before going to that you know i just want to give brief uh, you know idea about what is csir uh, csir is like you know we have this some council of scientific and industrial research it comes under the you know department of science and technology so our 
goal is started with you know assisting the industry you know both their the problem with their uh, you know just in industry they will be have a lot of issues especially in the r and d but for, uh, again we will do a lot of basic uh, sciences and eventually one can uh, see that you know this technology whatever has, we have found out can be taken into industrial level okay. so now in india we have most like a 39 labs 38 to 39 labs and you know all over the country so we can name it any branches of science like is the whether it is physical sciences or chemical sciences biological sciences engineering sciences or information sciences we have the lab all over the india so for example in tamil nadu we have sikri right in parakudi and our more in clri here in chennai and in kerala kerala we have nist trivandrum and we have all the way up to ncl we are here in pune and we have all the iim is in jammu so we have you know it also covers variety of sciences it's not just chemistry or physics it goes through you know, like wood and science food what we have it in a cpri in, in, in mysore that comes from also the food chemistry so you have a wide spectrum of sciences that aligned with the national priorities as well as they can also closely work with the industry the basic idea is you support the industry as well as you do basic sciences to increase the knowledge and generate it and things like that so it has like wide spectrum of it you can have not just the academic research but it also have a lot of you know application point of view also one can have great knowledge about it so this is a place i welcome everyone to visit ncl if not now like any time in the future and uh, this is the code you can see right right after entering the you know the main building the purpose of this labor laboratory is to advance knowledge and apply the chemical science for the good of the people so this is john mcquain is one of the founding director of this laboratory way back in 1948 you know he like spent this sentence but it still holds good and uh, we as well as all of you like you know like all the are contributors to this statement so it has a lot of meaning and uh, you know we are uh, you know everybody every scientist the students everybody is working along you know along the lines to fulfill this criteria of course in csir in cl we have different like you know departments Like you can have physical chemistry, material characterization, polymers, biochemical, and innovation. Like that's one of the things we I want to talk about. Organic chemistry, catalysis. Like innovation is something like you know whatever you find, not only that is important. You need to protect it. Like you know there's something called the patent, that intellectual property protection. So so that you know it it can be of like you know we can make uh, create a wealth of profit. So that's also one of the very nice things about in NCL. and we have wide variety of spectrum like you know one can talk about chemistry in general you can fit into anywhere catalysis organic or physical or inorganic so it has a wide variety of it we have close to something like a 130 scientist all are chemists so that's a great about it so you can you name your branch of science or branch of expertise you can have it here okay that's uh, very nice you know you will be uh, you will be working with like one that is scientist with uh, chemist with a different expertise always bring out the best of us uh, you know of course also the kind of research you know it's a wide variety like you know, nowadays the material rule the world now like you know you talk about nano material and then again nano material you have wide variety of inorganic as well as organic material you know just nowadays the energy environment and you know food you know, they, they are it's going to be a very big issue And it's it's already, it's already we have uh, we are seeing the effect, but it's going to be important in the future, like water, environment, food, energy, out of it, all these things. So you can have all these areas in general, uh, you know, especially in the engineering part. Like you know, the basic science. What we do is that you now we talk about everything in small scale. Like you know, for example, like you know, we can make coffee for six people in the family. But suddenly we are going to make coffee for like a thousand people with the same taste. It's going to be difficult. That's why the engineering people comes out. That's a scaling up. The chemistry, thermodynamics involved are going to be slightly different. I need to consider the number of channels before going to take this lab chemistry to the you know 
or uh, the you know the, the tile scale so the chemical engineers play an important role so we have a very active group or active division in this uh, ncl pune okay and uh, we have also there are like different varieties like you know we, we are working on water we are working on polymers and we have like you know a lot of pharmaceutical ingredients like you know some sort of some lab basically the technology is transferred from this lab it's not that we don't make all these things maybe we find a better way to synthesize in terms of cost in terms of you know using the starting material right starting material then we'll transfer the technology to the company okay of course in this pandemic situation also last four or five months have been really nice not only for ncl as the whole together for the csir and they came up with a fantastic you know like in you know, a mask or ppe level or oxygen concentrator you know scientists they are since they they have a wide variety of you know spectrum across the science everybody is trying to contribute to the covid 19 and they in part you know they are partly successful and uh, it, it, it gives a lot of opportunity to you know keep students or scientists engaged the national level priority you know, uh, like you know aspects and also we have very important like uh, you know energy because the energy is going to be a important one you know you may not feel it now like maybe last four months but you know it's going to be really a challenging area one has to worry about it so out of it i'm going to spend a couple of minutes how one can enter it like you know it's what sort of, uh, i just told about in the ncl one can join if you have csir net exam qualified you are you can choose your guide okay but other than however like there are other ways one can enter the or enter and do some research and contribute to the project by means of project assistant and you can come and start working some different projects and you can publish your papers and you can appear for srf that's what an another way to do it uh, you know so but again uh given just having said that uh, i will always always wish that everyone has to appear for uh, gate or psa exam to qualify that you can choose your own lab or your guide or your institute whether it's iit or iasc or icer or universities or national labs they are fantastic nowadays i can tell you that the opportunity as well as facilities provided now is amazing and uh, it's ever the most of the time it's highly interdisciplinary area nowadays so you can have the knowledge from different areas together not only from just organic synthesis not just you know only with the key putting together and see the challenges and the try to solve it understand it so that you know we can make it better and make it better for the society all together okay so with that you know i am going to uh, run into some general slides you know i am sure that many of you heard about the yeah, philosopher leonardo da vinci he said like almost like a 500 years back that you know when nature finishes producing its own species man begins using natural things and with the help of this nature to create infinity of species i think you know this you know nice philosopher said about 500 years and that's what happening now like you know man try to understand everything like you know from the condensed matter to like what are the molecules in and around us and see what can we do like you know we can track it from bulk to molecular level and the trying to understand its properties and creating new structures or new properties it's amazing one and it's still its whole hood and it's happening now and this is again this is again 300 years later this is jane marshe a another philosopher and they said that you know i assure you that most of the wonderful and most interesting phenomena of nature are almost all of the produced by chemical power i think as a chemist we would need to be proud that like you know one can see everything around us is a chemistry we laugh that the chemistry we get angry that the chemistry involved in it so you can think of anything you can correlate with the chemistry there is a kind of certain principle okay this is what is why why the things are happening you know the why asking why it created the, you know people like move to one paradigm to another paradigm otherwise you know you are stuck in like age old thing you know so but if you are surrounding us there a lot of things are happening around us it was driven by chemistry you know it's just in, in terms of biological or chemical or like you know everything in terms of you can correlate the things happen with the chemistry or chemical power and there's a another physicist very famous richard feynman you know uh, he said a very nice way you know it's uh, not a very nice thing so everything that has living can be understood in terms of giggling and giggling atoms you know that's put it in 
every science in a very general perspective we has said about it but in that part we now we are trying to understand like what happens when the reaction goes from one substrate to another substrate what happens in terms of molecules or atoms or like bonds or vibrations you know so it's very nice things to hear and uh, you know and you know i'm coming back to the you know kind of like you know this is i made it for very general audience i'm sure that like you know so if you look at the structure say like you know you, whether it's a red fort or dark mall or like you know palace around the country it's a very nice art you know we made it out of brick you know so the basic thing is a brick as well as the holding towards the bricks or something like you know we call like you know that they have different uh, you know binders but we have we call in chemistry point of view one can think about in you know, atoms bonds you know molecules it's very nice like you know 100 years back there is no clear understanding i can tell you one thing this last 100 years has been wonderful for science there's many things happened you know the definition of bonds you know there is a definition of you know uh, electro there a lot of things that happen you know bonds or spectroscopy what happened to, like you know x ray structures of you know any molecule that can be visualized so everything like you know people used to we have like you know even 1920s when quantum mechanics started we have a lot of arguments like you know talking the concepts of quantum mechanics came there are a lot of arguments but eventually you know to try understand something what's the nature of bonds and what's the nature of molecules and what's the nature of how we can functionalize or what the chemistry world can do very in a nice way before they have done it but you know this last 100 years has been wonder fantastic one can design the molecule Okay, this is what I want. Okay, this is what I need to go back to the starting material. Then I can come back. You know, very very nice. Like you know, like planned synthesis. One can achieve. One the, one one can really plan the way we can synthesize, and the care the play the way it can be functionalized for specific purposes. Okay, that's amazing career for the last hundred year hundred years. Yes. So it all started in 1980, like 1828, like that. When Wohler started to synthesize, he is an inorganic chemist, but you know he only showed that from by comparing some inorganic salts, he could be able to make organic compounds. You know, so that's very nice. But nowadays people have, you know, with the right side I showed you a taxol molecule. It's a very complex molecule, uh, but it has a lot of potential because it is, a, you know, drug for a breast cancer. But if you want if you want to like you know sacrifice 40 years old or 50 years old tree to just to compensate for three to four patients what you can do is the chemist can think is how to make this molecule okay now he can go back by using his knowledge on the chemistry and the activity of each functional group he can decide where it can be started and how it can be ended so that you know and at the same time you can create a lot of understanding about the reactions and creating a lot of reagents to do specific task so the, it was like in 20 years back it was a very hot topic and uh, you know i think uh, professor case nicolo came up with a fantastic way to synthesize this molecule way back in 20 years before but still it you know it got a lot of understanding about the structure you know and the reactivity you know how one can control uh, the reactivity and synthesize a specific molecule right and also there are a lot of complex molecules you can see even you know our professor rb woodward synthesizes synthesizes these very you know fostering based molecules like vitamin b12 you know this very you know, biological molecules and you know and uh, tissue is synthesized of polytaxin it's a very large molecule you can see and the number of you know the number of chiral centers you know when we normal molecules are fine but if you want to really synthesize a chiral molecule it's a challenge but you know these scientists have dedicated their lives to understand the reactivity and the way the reaction works the re the way we can organize the starting material from starting material to product professor kore came up again with the entirely new method of retrosynthetic analysis then you know we have a kind of algorithms you know okay for this molecule let us start with this starting material that's a nice way of describing the organic synthesis and you know and also you know the the male toxin is a, one of the very you know long very complex molecules but it has a lot of potent you know anti you know bio uh, you know activity you know you can use it for other things so now, now the synthesis of common is kind of fairly established but again one has to be very clear about 
you know uh, you know what they want and using the new methodology nowadays if you see very last 20 years has been really good for i would say that you know kind of green chemistry you know it came up in a nice way you know around the across the globe scientists have worked in terms of what kind of green environment then one can offer so that you know the toxicity offered by the gas in medium condition is kind of low, kind of lower now people are discussing about the green solvent and people talk about the green reagent and for example light is one of the you know light is one of the you know you know the green reagent because it won't harm the use of visible light because light is falling on us every day you know so again the last 20 years has been you know the unit of the photochemistry advanced understanding the you know the light interacting with matter from known for last 40 years or 50 years ever since kasha talked about you know and in the fluorescence or Phosphorus has been really useful in terms of organic chemistry, where chemists use this concept of light as a reagent and to do some chemical reactions. You know, uh, means the, the functional group transformation or metrology, everything using by you know like visible light. So that's an amazing area, amazing era that we are living in, and you know, including the knowledge and taking forward is always a very interesting you know time. I'm just showing this, you know, I think, you know, as a, as a scientist, you know, as a scientist, you are like, you know, you are prone to be, a, I am sure that most of the, I'm, I'm like, you know, most of the students, I'm saying, we have to learn to ask questions, like, you know, why is something happening like that? I can tell you one thing, you know, uh, I, I think there are, uh, sorry, yeah, there are systems in our surroundings, they look always pretty impressive colors, like, for example, leaves look like a green, and the tomato or like anything that you look for they are looking very nice colors and if you track down the reason for all these things there will be a molecule responsible for it that's the organic molecule or organic pigment that's responsible for it for example like the chlorophyll or yeah, lycopene for like a tomato or papaya seed and many other things for example colors for beet or carrot it's all like a matter of uh, organic compounds uh, you know, the conjugated organic compounds, the full sugar, glucose, everything can talk about it. And not only colors, the kind of taste it brings in, or uh, color as well as like in the taste, like an onion, if you feel it off, you like, you know, there, there's a kind of reaction happens that some sulfur compounds release. And if you take about this, you know, this chili that's a kind of spicy or hot nature, not only that color as well as the taste also comes up, comes up with this one. And further, when you want to do make this kind of mo molecule to the function, for example, all these things that we talked about molecules, if we talk about the functions, like, you know, not only molecule, like, you know, molecule also can assemble, like, you know, it's like, you know, it, it can talk to each other, or it can contact each other, or it can interact with each other. There are forces beyond this covalent bond. There are bonds known for this, like, you know, very weak interactions called or in hydrogen bonding, or cation phi, or pi phi, or CH phi, or wonderful forces. Just these forces are also very important, so that, you know, you know, then only it can do some functions out of it, you know. So, for example, like, you know, even though these bonds are very weak, for example, if you take a carbon-carbon bond, uh, you know, with the energy will be something like 80, 70 to 80 kilocal per mole, but these hydrogen bonding, all these things will be like, you know, 5 to 10 kilocal per mole, even all these interactions will be less than, you know, I, I would say the less than a kilocal per mole. But even though they are having less energy, single, uh, you know, if you consider it a single, uh, you know, interaction, but in the nature it has like a multiple interaction. You can have, you know, water, like, you know, you can think, ask you, like, you know, this is maybe a famous question to ask, why hydrogen sulfide is here, gas, uh, whereas water is here for liquid. Now, there are interactions, whereas some interactions are less in hydrogen sulfide, whereas hydrogen bonding is more pronounced in water. So that's why the interactions are more so that, you know, it can condense into water, right, or uh, liquid. When these forces are forming multiple things, like, you know, uh, even that become very stronger, you know, these very weak forces can be, like, you know, many orders, so that you can, uh, like, you know, it's like, I just kept here, you know, it's symbolic, like, we were, we were, Liver versus limb here so that you can see these, even though they are very weak forces, it can you know win. So, next one, uh, even though these molecules, some molecules that we are going to talk about in supramolecules, right? Because these forces, 
now with uh, um, besides this uh, bonding nature there are a lot of non bonding nature interactions are there with these forces you know we can have something called supra molecules from atoms to bonds i uh, said uh, you know atoms to bonds to molecules and we are talking something about supra molecules there is something called you know you know micelles you know it's nothing but soap solution it does a lot of functions you know surfactant uh, what we know is like only you know removing the dirt out of our shirt but it has relevant industrial applications especially you know getting the surfaces and everything but in general what we are talking about is yeah you now assembly of molecules like you know, our dna like an assembly of molecules not like a one just a single molecule so all these things are important like you know we need to make the molecules and we should know how the molecules interact all these things have been kind of we have some kind of understanding now you know very well established understanding and how these super molecules can be used in different purposes even nowadays if you look at it you know on the you know the drug you know trans like in you know, a gene transfer or drug delivery systems are very important where this understanding about simple supramolecular uh, chemistry or supramolecular interactions are going to help in a big way i can tell you that you know it's a very fantastic research opportunity for the uh, by using this kind of molecular organization molecular assembly i would say that you know this and all very very preliminary things and you know coming back to this one like you know you know this now we have molecule we have assemblies and how it's going to respond to the external stimuli now that's always the key point for example we have system uh, you know how it respond to the light how it respond to like electricity like you know that another broad area called photochemistry how yeah, you know photon interact with the molecule or uh, put it in general term how the molecules or matter light and matter interact and what is the consequences all these things but i am going to in this talk i am going to confine myself to a mostly this organic type you know this photochemistry is a very vast area one can you know everything as uh, professor you know sivadayan is just said it's a very vast you know in and around us everything happening because of the photochemistry that's something initiated right so but i'm going to confine myself to most of the time is the organic why it is important and you know uh, something like for example the exciting exciting is something is a very broad area like you know this you know you can talk about scientists uh, you know when tendul gar hit the century not now maybe now we need to look for this graph for your somebody or like you know it's basically you are giving certain amount of you know some kind of activation uh, something like uh, disturbance like you know uh, like you know you are giving some kind of better pressure to the molecule and we just realize uh, how the molecule responds with that we can see for example we uh, like you know suddenly uh, there's a fire in our hand we don't want to have the fire in our hand for a long time we just want to dissipate so that we will move on something like that it's a molecule also having the same bi rate now if you pump in some energy in terms of light or in terms of current you know, it doesn't want to like it want to respond and it want to like you know quickly relax to something else so that's uh, something primarily you can talk about it so photochemistry is nothing but what is the understanding is that uh, you know you are have a molecule you have a molecule where you have uh, highest occupied molecular orbital that is homo or lowest unoccupied orbital that's lumo when you are shining the light uh, you know you are just putting the one electron to the other orbital okay you are not removing completely outside okay that is that something called oxidation you are not doing it you know you there, there are orbitals molecular orbitals there is a non bonding orbital there is a pi orbital there is a pi star orbital and sure that all of you would have studied in your masters so the when the light of absorbed energy that's what is very important e is equal to h nu like you know the energy gap the h nu is not any h nu this e equal to h nu means what is the difference between uh, you know the, the the energy gap between these two levels uh, is the photon of sufficient uh, the energy that matches with the energy gap then that something will have the, the electron can be distributed to other orbital okay of course this is a fundamental thing for any spectroscopy if you talk about any uv or ir or nmr any spectroscopy that's a, you know that's a logic that the whole spectroscopy came out of you know the word spectroscopy came out of from this interaction he could have to you to understand that and also the photochemistry we are not you know completely when you are doing excitation of a told before we are not completely uh, removing the electron from the you know outside you are not oxidizing it you are just keeping some energy so that the electron go from here to here okay and it doesn't want to be there for longer time 
So anyway, it will come back, right? So as I told, like you know, uh, uh, it doesn't want to be there. But anyway, before that, you know, uh, I leave it to you. The light is having uh, the you know history of like you know many like maybe like you know it's just two thousand years we have been working on it to understand what is light. You know that's why see this history will tell you know how people thought about it. You know maybe they may be right or wrong. That is fine. But at this point in time, how people thought about that particular issue, so that you know the the the, the level of understanding increased like you know once a year passes by. So that's what the research works. What we are saying today, like you know, is understanding maybe hold or may not be hold even after like a fifty years. You know that's a, you know that's the beauty of research together. You know, or trying to understand something. You now people thought about like you know what is the light and Newton said that it's a particle and Maxwell said it's a wave, and you know there are a lot of bunch of things. You know this uh, Max Planck brought out of the you know called quanta or Einstein said photons, and Niels Bohr said about like you know this. this Part of the theory, whereas the Debrock is said is the real nature. So it brought out like entirely people are working to understand what is light. And eventually, you know, they can convince with that, like you know, it's like in both it can they behave like uh, waves as well as particles because there are explainable proofs to understand that like you know, it's a wave or particle. Okay, so however, you know, it's a light. It's electromagnetic radiation. Uh, we already know that. Now it can go from gamma ray to all the way to you know your Radio waves and everything, but each of having different energy. That's a very nice thing about it. Like for example, uh, you know the equation is E equal to h nu, and uh, you know then you are looking at the energy of each one. What's the energy? Energy content of each photon. You are looking at it. Most of the time, the chemists are most interested in this area, especially organic chemists, like in the you know UV as well as visible, because. Uh, that's where the electronic transition can be very enabled. Okay, if you really want to do the you know nuclear, then you need to go to radio. That's what the NMR talks about. But if you are uh, want to excite the core electrons and all, like you know you have gamma ray, X rays, all these things. You know that is having different. You know, uh, uh, just the energy content is uh, there. Is huge. It can do something else. For electronic transition, we will be using UV and visible, and that's the max like NIR spectrum, NIR regions of the spectrum. And uh, you know, because of it has like you know, what is important is what is the energy of the photon that you are looking for. And if you want to do some work, you need to know how much energy is required. For example, uh, carbon-carbon. In order to break the carbon-carbon bond, I need to spend something like a 70 to 80 kilocal per mole. Then I need to choose the right wavelength, which will give us 80 to 70 to 80 kilocal per mole. Okay, that's why that's the deal. Okay, we need to have uh, you know. Uh, because nothing is uh, you know free. You need to spend some energy to do some job. So, yeah. so now, like in the here, that's what I have kept like in you know, a different uh, you know uh, kind of photons and its corresponding energy. For example, 400 nanometer is something called 71.5 kilocal per mole, whereas 700 nanometer is something to do with the 48, 45, 41 kilocal per mole. So by using the 700 nanometer, I cannot break a single single carbon carbon single bond. That's the idea. Whereas if I can do it, maybe I can if I am using somewhere around 350 or something. So you need to have right balance of energy required to do the job and the light. Okay. So it's a simple idea. We can begin with. And uh, of course, there are a lot of resources nowadays. You know, nowadays you know, 20 years back, you know, LED got like a Nobel Prize few years back. You know, it made the technology very you know, cheap in the sense that you can have light source of any wavelength that you want. If I'm going down to the market, you know, I, for example, I go to the market and pick up my own, the, like, you know, LEDs and everything, and I assemble myself because, so that I can understand what they have, because, why, you know, so, so that then with the way we want to arrange, we can align it. So nowadays, the technology is, uh, you know, uh, common to the society, and we can have, we can avail this facility. It's not like it's 20 years back. We need to buy very sophisticated lamp sources to do the you know, for the chemistry. And as I told before, there is a Jablonski diagram. I know that many of them who have you know, studied the now is like light absorption and the internal conversion, so that uh, you know we can have fluorescence from the single state. Uh, this system can undergo intersystem crossing to a different multiplicity, which will change the triplet, and it can give up you know phosphorescence. Okay. So this is a simple uh, diagram, you know, generalize the 
diagram that can be you know useful all the time and there are applications for example you know it's a common thing like you know there is a you know i'm sure that uh, you know most of them would have heard about uh, trans and cis i'm just showing a, a picture uh, that's a hand pump kept it in two different arrangements i would say that you know i are put it in another way two different configuration one we have like you know the the hand pump as well as the uh, you know the, the water provider is on the opposite side one on the same side you know i am taking just that just borrowing some kind of analogy to the trans and cis okay trans and cis uh, like you know if you see trans it can occupy more space cis it will occupy less space here right and similarly something like this you know something cis and trans like you know but you know this thing stand out like you know it looks like something like you know some movement uh, you know some kind of movement or some kind of motion but then this kind of motions happens at a molecular level i would say that you know uh, one meter this and all i'm just given millimeter micrometer nanometer like you know this much very like nanometer level then it can do wonders okay because you know uh, this kind of just this kind of cis and trans for example i can tell you the way we understand the, our visual visualization right there's a protein called rhodopsin and uh, in our eyes even now the reason i'm seeing you is there is some photochemical reaction happens in my eye you know that's why you know uh, for, for example there's a retinol in our uh, uh, in the protein called rhodopsin it is there in our eye so whenever you shine the light light falls on this uh, you know protein or uh, eye you know that the, the simple one double bond is getting kind of isomerized twisted just nothing but like you know one is going from this to like you know kind of twisting you know simple a simple isomerization it is very difficult to do by thermal chemistry okay thermal chemistry means you know that you have known something called acceleration energy you need to have something huge energy you cannot you know see it ourselves you know that the rate of the reaction also you know depends upon the acceleration energy and uh, you know in order to achieve activation energy we cannot you know <laughs> you know they need to give a lot of energy or put it in a lot of thermal energy rather we can give some light you know of the same energy say like you know let's say some photon of this record photon it will be i'm sure that it will be invisible because we are seeing everything is visible right? so like you know then the photon just flips the bond from cis to trans we are simple efficient photochemistry okay in the sense that now uh, yeah, a reaction happen in our eyes all the time whenever you are seeing something that means we are you know them there is some reaction that trigger the process okay this is the first uh, pre preliminary step for our vision process right so from cis to trans there is a whole lot of changes in the shape of the protein for example if you from oval shape to something like a rectangular anyway this is everything i am putting for for our understanding okay uh, so that you don't need to take everything like for example the conformation of protein i'm, I'm just keeping like a from oval shape to this one there's a conformal change of a protein that triggers a lot of other biological events eventually we see that that's what it is okay it's a pure uh, you know uh, photo chemical reaction yeah this isomer can go to the trans isomer on the other hand there's yet another uh, protein called green fluorescent protein it's a widely used it's yet another like you know, it's also got a nobel prize in 2008 here a simple molecule right a simple molecule like you know this is a molecule which is responsible for the light absorption as well as emission okay that is the right away in between this protein okay the reason is very nice thing about it this is also having a double bond in the molecule but in the protein it cannot go any isomerization okay the previous reaction if you see a clear isomerization that's only that's why we see the thing but in the same thing even though this particular chromophore which is in the air inside the you know uh, protein structure this molecule now cannot undergo isomerization you know you can just think of maybe some of you would have traveled during your festival time to your home where the bus or train will be very crowded you will be standing like this you cannot move a hand or leg or for some time you will be for maybe half an hour also like you are your conformation is kind of frozen right something the similar similar scenario is happening inside this uh, barrel for this molecule there this hydrogen uh, this oh is hydrogen bonded to something else this is hydrogen bonded to something else this is hydrogen bonded to something else so it cannot move around much so there is no way that 
the reaction cannot happen so rather the molecules can emit the light so that's where uh, you know it, it's uh, you know the quantum yield or you know the efficiency of the reaction is 70 if you accept 100 molecules 70 percent of the molecules will emit the light okay and if you take this chromophore i can do it in the lab just i'm a synthetic chemist i can make this molecule and if i do it in the fluorescent it won't be fluorescent at all because in the solution it can undergo very nice Pay rotation or isomerization. Okay, that's nice thing about it. So all these things happened. You know why it got Nobel Prize? Because somebody really worked on 30 to 40 years on this observation. You know, then they understand the structure by X-ray crystallography. Then I, they found out that this is the molecule is responsible for the emission. Now what they can do is chemists can do is that they can functionalize a different chromophore. There is something whole lot of things called mutation. Maybe the biologists can understand. But you know, mutation is nothing but you change the amino acid in a peptide, uh, you know, in a, in a protein at a specific site, so that you can enter an answer con uh, conjugation, and you know the particle in one dimensional box. If you increase the conjugation, the homolumer gap will become slow, very smaller, so that you know the light absorption will be fixed to longer wavelength. Okay. Now, by doing this engineering, one can shift this blue to all the way to red, just to do keeping some kind of substitution here. Okay, so this protein will form. If you synthesize, you know, you can program it. Okay, this is something to do with molecular biology. You can program it, but you can tune the color, whole color. Okay, and the completely free the uh, you know isomerization. And this is one of the very elegant work. And, you look for, and the another one, you know, there are something called the functional materials called photochromic materials. For example, uh, you know, you take this pyropyrin, and you know, then you shine the light. You know, you do this reaction. Okay, this kind of, uh, you know, the the, the cyclic structure, it, you know, it goes to this myrosinine structure, and uh, myrosinine followed by isomerization. Then it, uh, you know, this is a colored one. Okay, this common is very colored, and whereas if you leave it for some time, this will come back. Okay, so, so there are something called photochromic materials. For example, that's why they use it in uh, like you know sunglasses. You know, based upon the light, it, uh, you know it, it has like slowly it changes the color, and one can have a uh, different colors out of it, and so that the light may not come through. Like it's basically it acts as a filter. The sunglass basically, if you wear it, in the sunlight is more than you. The, the, the sunglass or the glass becomes very colorful. It uh, I don't allow the unwanted light to arise. Okay, and you know this is a simple photochromic material. And also, uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you, uh, you know, uh, uh, like you know, seen the fireflies. You know, fireflies. You know, that's it. Again, a reaction happens. You know, night. For example, night, there's no, whatever I'm talking about, all these things are like, you know, if I'm giving some light, something will be emitted, right? Like, let's say, if I'm going through the geographic diagram, if I'm giving some light, then some light is coming out. Whereas in the light, if there, there are fireflies, you know, which molecules excite so that it will emit. So basically, the excited state is produced by some reaction, okay? Basically, if you understand clearly, you would have said it, there are coupled reactions in biology where exothermic reaction is always coupled with some endothermic reaction so that you know the work functions very nicely where like here there are some reaction happens in the system uh you know sorry like you know maybe i'll skip it like there are for example there are some reaction for example you know i'm just looking at this reaction okay for example whereas whenever you are having high energetic uh cyclobutane derivative if it can decompose and also it can release enormous amount of energy that energy can be useful to help the dying molecule to excite. It's a kind of thermal excitation. Okay. Thermal excitation you can understand by yet another process in the Diwali tank. Okay. For example, you firefox, fireworks for thermal excitation. You have to be just, if you use a transium ion, if you are using barium salt, you will be having different light. It's because, you know, when you are heat, when you fire, and you know, there's a lot of oxidizing material inside, there's a fuel inside, and uh, you know that energy that releases huge amount of energy uh, that energy is used to promote the electron in the barium salt or transium salt so when it's coming back to the ground state it gives a color okay so this is something like a thermal excitation like you one can do the thermal excitation requires a lot of energy that's why i'm saying the fireworks the energy produced inside the you know any crackers is a huge 
that's why you can see the damage caused by fibros is like you know very few like you know sometimes uh, you, know, you know people have very serious injuries because the energy produced is uh, very huge inside right so there is something called the thermal excitation we can do chemical excitation we can do photo excitation we can use the light it's very easy uh, sometimes we are using it since uh, like the pyro uh, entirely on our pyro techniques entirely on thermal excitation by which the atoms are or electrons are promoted to the higher level by the heat uh, liberated in the during the reaction right yeah. now uh, you know there are something like you know for example this molecule it uh, it, when it breaks down, it releases a carbon dioxide. That's a very easy process, and at the same time, there's a lot of energy also involved. By the time the dye can go to the excited state, okay, now the dye can emit. So that's why you know even in the you know if you see in the previous slide, nowadays you know there are a lot of things that has come up. Uh, this is called the birthday particle weighting, like you know sticks, glow sticks. You can break it. Basically, the, there are two walls inside uh, like in one wall the, this chemical will be there the another one the hydrogen peroxide will be there so when these two meet then you'll be getting this intermediate eventually that will break into uh, you know carbon dioxide and uh, you know then it can do the different colors by thermal excitation okay and now we uh, can choose a different light uh, you know different dye you know to see different colors okay the principle is same Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exothermic reaction gives the energy. That energy is sufficient enough to promote electrons for the dye. This dye molecule, then it can emit. Okay. And uh, of course, there is the solvent chromism. You can take a dye. You know, you know by understanding the homolumo, you know, structure. For example, this is a Brucker myrosine in dye. You know, then this dye can exist in this form or this form. It's a resonating structure. Depending upon the solvent polarity. You know, you can exist in this color or this color. Now, what you are doing is that, uh, you know, you are trying to change just the color I and mean, just to change the solvent of different polarity. You are putting in another way different dielectric constant so that, you know, the color of the whole medium can change. All these things, whatever you are seeing, are the same compound, but only in the different solvent. Okay. So, you know, one can compare these chameleon properties, but the chameleon work can really different, you know, uh, you know principles. You know, there's a lot of nanocrystals involved in all these things, but you know, you can look at it. And why we need to have this? Like, you know, I was talking about all the time. You know, you know there are some okay, this, there are some terms I'm using, like you know, photo excitation, you know, energy transfer, or uh, thermal excitation. Uh, you know, these things are like you know very important because you know we need to understand this reaction. You know, this photosynthesis. It's very simple. You know, looking at the things. Very simple because carbon dioxide goes to glucose, water goes to oxygen. Right? That I can tell you one thing. Even today, if you split water into gas, hydrogen gas, okay, actually the protons are stored in glucose. That I will come back to you, you know, momentarily. So it is a, one of the very fascinating reactions. You know, scientists are working on it, how to duplicate it. The reason is very simple. Okay, okay, the, you know the, the understanding are very clear. The light energy. Is basically you know produce water to oxygen and also protons. Okay, uh, protons. The protons will do something else, and eventually the carbon dioxide can be fixed by using these protons and everything as a glucose. Okay. So anyway, the photochemistry is done with water splitting. Okay. That's a something called water splitting. You can take a water and you can split into protons, oxygen, and the electrons. Okay, that's a very you know even today it's one of the very hot topics. If you have a catalyst, you know, I think, you know, as of now, no, I, I, I come to your point, I, I come to this point. So you need to understand that the photosynthesis, like there are two reactions, one is dark and it's light. And the light reaction is basically it splits water to proton, oxygen and electron. Okay. Whereas the Darwin cycle is a dark reaction where it uses the electron or plus protons and that fixes the carbon dioxide. Okay. There are two reactions here. And uh, eventually, this is a very complex, like, you know, it's a very, like, you know, we are talking about photon, there is a chlorophyll, then, uh, then there's a water splitting here, okay, there's a water splitting, water goes to this, you know, all these things here, and then the two electrons are here, two protons, and the uh, molecule of water, uh, oxygen, and there is a lot of series of arranged electron acceptors, okay, there's something called energy transfer, okay, and also a series of electron transfer, okay. 
so that you know you will be getting a, you know uh, you know eventually you will be having the oxygen as well as glucose okay all these things are happening in this process uh, it's a very complex reactions it can form atp to atp sorry adp to atp it can form and like that's what it comes out here and the nadbh like you know as a reducing kind of agent so scientists are working for this one for the last 100 years to understand what it is of course photosynthesis you know they were working for the last you know 400 to years how it works you know but now they have very fairly some understanding how these reactions are working by using different types of spectroscopy time resolved spectroscopy and the synthesis in different model compounds okay and we need to understand just uh, you know that time that there's a yeah, you know father of uh, you know photosynthesis uh, swami chan he said 100 years back this is something like 1912 you know and if in a distant future the supply of coal becomes completely exhausted civilization will not be expected by that for life civilization will continue as long as sun shines he said something about okay one can use the sun and you know utilize the sun uh, you know very carefully then you don't need to worry about anything okay uh, the reason is also very important because now we are using nowadays for everything coal whole most of the electricity comes out from your your home in india is made out of coal because you know coal we are burning it hits the water water steam uh, rotates some kind of dynamo, dynamo that it uh, gives some kind of electricity it's a common one anything you need to burn something of course it's a renewable like a, a non-renewable i'm talking about okay anything eventually you need to heat you need to burn that burning will heat the water, the water steam can rotate the generator or help to rotate the fan of the generator, the only thing will generate the electricity, okay? But I okay, you have to think that, you know, philosophically, or uh, it's true that the coal also, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, driven by sun, it's a uh, photo energy, because long, many a billions years back, like, you know, all this photosynthesis happened, then that all this biomass converted into coal, okay? But it took long time time pressure heat everything but the way we are replacing is a huge okay just the population is very high and the demand is more than you know the rate at which is stored for million years we can be completely exhausted within 500 years so that's what the, that's the idea okay uh, but the, the whole lot of things came out uh, you know why not convert or use this sunlight to directly to electricity uh, you know uh, why we have to do with the coal because this, these are like, you know, non-renewable because it's not replenished by in our lifetime. Coal, you know, if something is process started, it may take another, like, you know, millions of years to get converted into coal. You know. It takes long time. It's a very slow process. But the consumption of electricity is huge. So we need to really think about a way to compensate these two process. At the same time, the deforestation also will be huge. You know, 1080, 1800, this where, where like a deforestation, we are going all the way here. Whereas population also is increasing seemingly. So we need to have some understanding how to use this photochemistry knowledge and you know utilize for you know solar energy conversion. Solar energy is one of the very nice, you know, to you know to tell the story. Now if you are able to harvest the whole energy, the sun, sunlight for one hour, okay, one hour energy uh, in a day, in a sunny day, that energy is sufficient for the whole globe or like the you know, whole earth for entire year okay if you can think about how much energy is falling on our surface or earth's surface that's a huge okay but again it's not just only to harvest then we need to think about where to store you know suddenly in chennai the flood is coming we don't know how to store the water even thing will run into ocean and that is a lot of calamity also so we need a we need to have a mechanism by which harvest the energy as well as store it so that we can use some time Okay, for example, hydrogen is one of the, you know, very efficient, uh, you know, power of, uh, powerful fuel. Because if you take hydrogen, you know, it can easily react and, uh, you know, react and gives the water as a byproduct. It's a very highly, you know, energy content is very high. But producing hydrogen is a highly exothermic reaction, okay? From water to oxygen, uh, you know, it is a highly exothermic. You need to spare something like a 56, you know, flow juice, you know, flow calcium mode. Whereas, if you use light, that's where a lot of interesting research happening across the world after this, you know, Honda Fujijima site. People use a lot of catalysts, 
photocatalyst and uh, it can uh, you know it can use the sunlight and the split the water it's a simple reaction okay take your water and uh, put this uh, photocatalyst you know water and hydrogen bubbles comes out then there's a lot of technology to separate the gas out but as of now uh, you know the the problem is with uh, titanium dioxide is it's very nice and uh, the problem is it can absorb only in the uv light uh, uv light as i told you a few slides back i didn't spend it uh, you know carefully so this is a solar spectrum here i have given now you can look at it you know and see so the uv light is very five percent only it's not like you know 250 to that they are very minimum amount only five percent of light and whereas most of the energy is there in you know visible and the nir region of content the solar sunlight okay and uh, of course you know people are working on it as i told you here like you know uh, this is a exothermic reaction you know uh, water to uh, like a kind of hydrogen or oxygen or carbon dioxide yes carbon dioxide also it's like you know one of the problem now is the carbon dioxide you know you know the day by day the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere is increasing you know you need to look at the data it's really amazing if you look at the last 100 years how it happened it's really huge uh, that causes this global warming and everything but if you use this water uh, so if you use the carbon dioxide to make some fuel that's also one of the very efficient way to do it now you can use some kind of very basic chemicals then you know it can be developed into further you know, that chemical can be used to further for other purposes okay and now one of the thing is uh, you know uh, you know the solar cells you know if you talk about solar cells it comes in a very big way like you know solar cell even i have used in my childhood days in my calculator the silicon solar cells are well known you know it is available in the market from 1980s onwards okay very nicely very good efficiency uh, but you know the problem is also now because of the demand that we are looking at it and uh, we need different purposes also we don't need to depend upon all the time to silicon solar cells silicon solar cells can be used for big farm or big city to power whereas we have a lot of other things like you know there are other type of you know uh, solar cells even i won't say this is a disadvantage uh, we are you know solar energy harvesting solar energy always a, a nice thing but again you need to have for silicon solar cells we need to have high purity silicon even in india we don't have the technology now you know so far uh, we are importing from the china or whatever I can tell you one thing, wherever you are seeing the silicon solar cells, it is imported from China. Okay? We don't have any technology to make the, uh, even we don't have the process to, uh, we don't have any process to, you know, make pure silica in India, okay, as of now, even, you know, we don't have any plan, the understanding I have as of now, okay. There are other type of solar cells, are right? there are a number of second cell, second generation, third generation, yeah, where we, you know, we need to use like you know thin film solar cells or third generation is make use of chemist is like a polymer solar cells or dyson cell solar cells or perovskite solar cells you know they are easy to make it of course there are still there are a lot of challenges compared to silicon solar cells they are very easy to fabricate and uh, you know cost is very less and everything there's a lot of activities are going on for example this year the silicon solar cells is a polymer solar cell in denmark you know they have kept it in two kilometers like you know the printer they have the roller you know whenever they want they can put it and they can remove it here yes. and the way they make it they can can make it flexible so that you know uh, from the army side they can put it as a tent you know a tent or ba backpack so that they can power anything you know they are roaming around and uh, okay that's the advantage they have and this is having you know i, I can spend one or couple of minutes here so that i can stop it so this Dyson set solar cell, if you ask, ask together, if you see, there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's a highly interdisciplinary research in the sense that one can understand the material chemistry and the organic chemistry and the electrochemistry and photochemistry. It brings everything in one number. At the end of the day, it's a device. You know, you are talking, you know, you are, you are showing something that can be useful. Okay. Once it is uh, kind of stabilized, you can take it further. Like, you know, for example, I have uh, you know, I can explain it here. For example, the dye sensitized to the solar cells, it has, you know, the dye. You know, you can promote your dye from homo to lumo upon photo excitation. And it can excite, you know, the dye is anchored on TiO2. It can inject the electron to TiO2. Then it can put into the circuit. By that time, the oxidized dye can be regenerated by the electrolyte. Okay. 
and then is the electric catalysis at the end of cathode side. Okay. There's a lot of things. For example, the electrochemist can look at this improving this area. But a photochemist can it can look into the generating the dye as well as understanding the TAO industry. Okay. A material chemist to understand improve the TAO itself. Because the inorganic materials are also very beautiful. Because you know, we are talking organic molecules, choline is a choline always. Whereas in, if you go to the inorganic TAO2, one can make in different forms of TAO2 nanomaterial. You know, you can make it just like a, not the increase the surface area. That's what it brings the beauty of the nanomaterial. You know, they can make flower, they can make like, you know, a number of morphologies they can bring it. Each unit will have different properties. Okay. So that's the comparison between implicated. You can make it in different phases. You know, that's what, that's, that's what the beauty of material comes one can look for electronic properties, or thermal properties, or stability, or different facets, or different catalytic activity. One can have different things on this one, like in a TA group. Whereas the electrolytes, for the electrochemists look at what electrolytes they can use, but forward based or copper based. Or, yeah, again, the electrochemists can look at like, what is the alternative material for platinum. Whether, like nowadays, platinum is very expensive, it's a noble metal, but you know, is there any other? You know, material that can work as a photo cathode, like a cathode. Okay. So there is a lot of opportunity in general in this highly interdisciplinary area to understand so that one can work, work can interact with many expertise to gain the knowledge in general about chemistry. Okay. At, at, at the end of the day, it's all under the umbrella of chemistry and science. Okay. So if you if you make it happen and they, you know, then you take it forward, that's good for the entire society. That's the whole idea. Of course, this is a simple way of making the solar cell. Basically, you, you put the you know, TaO2 and dip into the dye solution of the conductive you know, electrode, uh, generally FTO, and you know, put the counter electrode and fill the electrolyte. Then you measure the IVIC. This under some measurement, it shows to characterize the solar cell, whether the solar cell works fine or not. Okay. And if not working fine, then how can the chemistry always think how one can improve it? Okay. I'll tell you a few challenges in general. There are challenges, okay. You know, in general, one of the challenges I can tell you one thing is aggregation, dye aggregation. You know, uh, as you all, most of the time, is our chemist. Uh, the aggregation is nothing but, you know, most of the time our teacher taught you what is the Lambert law. And at the end of the class, uh, you know, the teacher also taught you when it won't work, you know, when it deviates. You know, one of the problems is uh, aggregation. Like, you know, when you're talking about not monomolecular mono uh, dye molecules, at the high concentration, you will be having different aggregate size. Then you know you will be having, uh, you know, uh, it won't work. The beer lambert law won't work. It will deviate from the you know, uh, uh, linearity. The other one is that organic dyes are good, very nice, but uh, it won't uh, it won't absorb all the light from the sun. Either you used to use a combination of dyes, one wavelength for 400 to 500, one dye for 400 to 500, another dye for 500 to 600, or you know. Uh, there are problems. We, need, we cannot uh, use one single dye because it doesn't have uh, you know, that much absorption all over the solar spectrum. Okay. And uh, you know, here I'm just uh, showing you. you know, we are trying to understand. I can uh, tell that you know we are trying to understand how one can control the aggregate. You know, I think that uh, one video, one that is a COVID time. I can tell you one thing. You know, this is a, you know nowadays I got in one of the WhatsApp messages. You know, we can have. When the people are crowded, then the COVID is kind of spread all over very easily. But you know, the social distancing, if you do it, you know, uh, you know, we are safe. We just doesn't know how to hop from one person to another person, you know. But uh, along the line, what we are doing at the molecular level, like you know, we want to have the dye far away. Because this type is thick. We know that how the dye is interacting with the CO2. And we can design the molecules so that you know the dyes are keeping away, okay? Uh, so that you know, so that it can do our function. Something like you know, uh, when it is isolated, the you know that person can do his own job. Otherwise, you know, this electron is going to hop in between this mono layer of the dyes on the surface. So we are working as the organic chemist. I am designing some dyes in general uh, with uh, light absorbing properties by controlling the dye aggregation, okay? So that, you know, uh, so that one can use this approach, uh, physical organic chemistry approach, one can, you know, you can develop several, uh, you can make a very better devices. For example, we have designed this kind of dyes, squaring dyes, where like, you know, 
uh, having alkyl groups everywhere. These alkyl groups keeping away each other the, on the surfaces. Whereas this molecule doesn't have any alkyl group, so that they can come together on the TaO2 surface. That's what it means. Of course, we can have all the characterization, but what I want to say is that together the device. Let us see the SQ1 without any alkyl group has only 4% or 3.5%, whereas SQ5 it has 9%. See, you didn't have anything change. You have some alkyl group. You kept the dye molecule far away, okay, so that it can control the aggregation as well as you know it reduces the self quenching. So you know something uh, you know, uh, we can we are working along the line, and also we need to be carefully understanding the importance of solvent and everything like you know that's why we are understanding us together together with the group of uh, six students of us now we are trying to we are be synthesizing a lot of dye molecules. And eventually, uh, understanding the photochemistry, photostability, photosynthesis of it, they eventually taking these molecules into the solar cells. And uh, uh, this dye is one of the best dyes so far in this family. Okay, we are still we are understanding uh, its property to enhance this device performance because in organic molecules we can go up to at the max like you know if we are in somewhere in 13, it's a world record now. As of now, we are 13, then we are good. Yes, you know we are uh, in a good uh, position to interact with some industry and you know to develop this type of devices altogether. Uh, but we are still working on this area uh, to understand the basic, uh, the basic properties beside these devices and everything. Uh, with that, I conclude my talk. Uh, you know, I need to thank uh, you know I need to thank you first for listening to me in this uh, testing time. And again, I would say that this is also yet another opportunity to for you to focus on your readings and enhance your knowledge in general. And uh, this is my group, and uh, these are some publications from the group. You know, it is this slide there with uh, Dr. Raja Singh and Dr. Vijayan. So, if somebody wants to have anything, you can read it. Uh, and also, if you have any doubt or any suggestions in the future, you are still free to write to me. Uh, I'll give some kind of suggestions, or if there is what we can do, or if there is any position here, or I can, in general, I can give interact with you to do something better, like you know, with my capability here. Okay. And again, I, I thank you for your uh, attention. Okay. I will take any questions if you have. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, thanks for the wonderful presentation. Yeah, we have some questions from the audience, sir. Let me take one. Yeah, please. The first one is in the future aspect, yeah. which other transition metal or any of the compounds can be studied for photocatalytic water splitting other than titanium dioxide? In the future aspect, yeah, now, any yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, nowadays there is a lot of, uh, I would say that, you know, the, 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 the And titanium is a metal oxide, semiconducting metal oxide. Uh, it's a semiconducting thing. So, but people are trying to work on this copper base so that you know uh, it will be environmentally friendly. And uh, there is always there is something called over potential. I did not talk about in general. Uh, you know, things won't work. Uh, you know, the, with the same. Let us say, if I need to spend only 50 rupees, 50 rupees are not sufficient. I need to have somewhat more. So there is something called in electrochemistry, people, I'm sure that in everybody aware about over potential, you need to have slightly, uh, you know, excess energy. So in order to reduce all these things, the people are working on different types of copper based metals and, uh, you know, a number of transition metals other than titanium. But, but you, you cannot see titanium is so good. But what you can do is you can improve the pro property of titanium by adding something to it. So, like if there is something called doping. You don't need to like you know even by five percent at the max five percent of doping with some other transition metal to titania it can enhance the property very nicely. So titania is as of now it's very you know one can afford it's a very cheap material. Okay, you know uh, it's the best one. But the people are trying to understand even zinc oxide, for example, zinc oxide also is a very nice metal oxide. And there is a lot of the idea is how to take it, you know, to the vis uh, visible region or NA region, so that you know it can do the same function. 
that's where the, all the synthesizers all all any other doping comes into picture to some extent now also to improve the some kind of electronic property for example conductivity how the how fast electron can move around within the you know the material so yeah uh, another question sir yeah in most of the photochemical reactions we find yes. the yield is always low why and in uh, any reason for this yeah i think this is one of the reason uh, you know uh, for example photochemistry the job of photochemistry is done with uh, i can say that you know you are exciting the molecule basically you are moving the electron from one orbital to another orbital and uh, yeah, then there is something happen to the excited state let us say the bond cleaves or the electron transfer for example uh, if you take naris1 or naris2 type you know naris1 if you take alpha cleavage product you will be having the radical there or if it is electron transfer then you will be having radical ion pair okay so the radical or uh, radical ion pairs once it's formed it all formed this kind of you know kind of all the thermodynamics associated with that sometimes uh, you know the back electron transfer also will be very possible just yes, you are handling with uh, you know highly reactive species radical or radical ions they are very reactive uh, so that you know the combining the exact radical is uh, you know uh, as a physical chemistry point of view it's interesting that yeah, you are trying to understand how the radicals moves and the uh, intermediate moves around the everything so that you know you can understand from each product how the mechanism by which it would have formed but as a you know a total synthesis or synthesis point of view uh, there are there are a lot of Uh, you know because of this competition because once you excite the molecule you are opening a lot of channels to the molecule whether the electron transfer or energy transfer or radical ion or radical pair so most of the time radical pairs once it's formed it always try to either like a three combine or disproportionate so even by this time it will give like three products and so uh, in a way it's a good in the sense that it will give you idea about how the you know intermediate moves around but if you are uh, working looking at the uh, you know if you are looking at the product aspect like you know now there's a clear way of doing it you know one can really control the you know if you are using the uh, you know one can really control the you know radical initiated process by confining the radicals that's where you know professor ramurthy works in delhi and the supramolecular system by which you know for example photo phase you will be having alpha as well as you know sorry alpha as well as para product how one can industrially there may be only one compound is relevant so how can you use only one compound uh, at the expense of not forming the other compound these are inter- challenging questions um, there are some uh, successful stories uh, in industry also by using the cyclodextrin as a, you know additive so that one can do it uh, but yes uh, but again nowadays if you look at the literature on low photo redox catalysis the is so really amazing like you know they can get up to more than 70% now it's a kind of understood but uh, altogether compared to the thermal chemistry the yield is somewhat low uh, the reason is because you are handling with high reactive species together and uh, and con- controlling the reactivity also yeah, well, it's another challenging one okay so the research is on and you know even today Uh, if you are having a reaction with 70% yield with 99% uh, you know anisotropic excess by photochemically uh, you know i'm sure that you know it's a very useful for society as well as you can see then a very high impact paper like you know nature of science yeah it's uh, the difficulty is involved with the reactivity of the intermediate that is formed yeah okay sir uh, another question sir yeah please uh r nanda kumar yes asked in case of organic materials Yeah. The photochemistry is well known besides many new concepts evolving like a TADF thermally yes. activated delayed fluorescence yes my nice. can you tell something in case of nanomaterials nanomaterials right nanomaterials what are you going to yeah uh, say i think uh, yeah the say for example the jablonsic diagram the nanomaterials were the the issue is in of course in the nanomaterials i'll confine it with the quantum confine there are a lot of nanomaterials is a broad term maybe i will put it in the quantum dot nanomaterials basically that's a confinement for example in principle in principle any nano any materials like you know uh, you will be talking about like for example for organic molecules uh, i will be talking about homo and lumo for about wherever inorganic materials or nanomaterials i don't talk about homo and lumo we will be talking about band structures 
there's something called a conduction band and balance band because we are talking about nano crystalline material it's a assembly of a periodical you know it's, it's a basically a crystalline material right so uh, the idea is where then you will be talking about the band for the homo so you can call it as a conduction band the there are several bands several states for the lumo that's for the valence band so i think uh, you know the, uh, then again like you know unlike organic molecules you cannot make perfect inorganic materials uh, actually you know because of the impact imperfect only we are also characterizing the material okay if you have few crystals uh, that we don't know the dimension will be you know it's keep growing they you know you understand right so that's a lot of defects you will create in the inorganic material the choice chance of creating a defect in a way it's good uh um, because you can control the electron or hole mobility basically electronic properties uh but inorganic materials is very interesting because the phase at engineering like you know see, see, if you talk about nano crystalline it forms one of the you know category of the crystals every crystal you'll be having defined the planes and every planes it have it wants atomic arrangements for example in even titanium dioxide like in you know, one phase is good for oxidation one phase is good for reduction so the engineering of inorganic materials is a highly challenging you know you know uh, even professor siana rao in india and the professor pradeep from iit madras one can look at it they look at their works you know they look precisely uh, you know you know uh, they can design and uh, you know uh, they can engineer the particular phase so basically you are forming a nano crystal and you don't want one phase to be you know grow then you need to put a specific capping agent so that you know that particular phase is grow and not form that phase is having entirely good for either oxidation or reduction okay so there are you know several planes of course in, in, in polish state chemistry if you are talking about nano materials you need to talk about polish state chemistry also you need to have very good idea about the crystallography and the planes and each plane how does it look atomic arrangement you know all these things are there but at present for example photosynthesis of titanium is well understood you know i can just uh, just the emission from the you know trap states you know basically you know all the lumo we are we are talking about the low uh, conduction valence band it's not valence band there are like a lot of uh, trap states behind it people talk about the fermi energy levels you know uh, just you know all these things are there so to some extent for few materials it's well understood you know for you know but you know uh, for example uh, he talked about tadf but there are a lot of uh, inorganic materials also like you know those so some kind of two photon absorption for example if you go to lanthanum uh, lanthanide you know it's a highly you know it's having the property of two photon absorption in the sense that it can absorb two uh, 800 nanometer photon then it can pump into one molecule where it can emit in 400 nanometer it's a kind of off conversion okay so it has some it's fairly understood it's still it's a very exciting area to work with that's what uh, whereas in uh, whereas whereas very limited organic chromophore source is two photon absorption or option version okay so i don't know whether i answered the question to the mr nandakumar or not but the thing is uh, certain molecules is well understood but again it's a combination of clear characterization from the x-ray point of view as well as lot of computation work only to understand how the you know bands are arranged because yes, you know the inorganic materials you know, for example organic molecules the homo lumo we have pretty much control for example even the some adding some solvent and everything we can have some effect we can absorb by you know uv spectroscopy but in, for inorganic materials the conduction band position of conduction band that's what we talk about you know fermi energy level uh, as you see that, that can be you know it varies with the number of things if we change the ph it varies if we change the you know ion solvent or ion strength of the medium it changes so there is a lot of interest to understand how the interface works you know uh, that's also one of the, even though i am an organic chemist but i do have some interest in understanding in the you know, interfaces between organic as well as inorganic because that's where uh, you know somebody say the uh, interface is a device if you understand the interface very nicely you can make a better device out of it Yes, you know, it's something like this. Like you know, you are in the Tamil Nadu and the Karnataka border. People at the border always know both the languages and both the cultures here. But people are interior Tamil Nadu or interior Karnataka. They 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 know only. You know that you know something. Uh, the interface is very important. 
to bring the best out of the materials and everything. But to some extent, it's understood. But still, this area is very understood. You know, see how to manipulate this is very not very clear. You know, that's why people are working on low band gap materials, which uh, you know, dopant will have better property for inorganic materials and everything. Yeah. Yes. The last one, sir. Please. Is there any technology available for enhancing solar energy conversion efficiency by using the photochromic dyes? Yeah, yeah, photo, of course. Uh, you know, this is a dye sensitive solar cells or photochromic dyes. You are talking about photochromic dyes? Photochromic dyes. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, you know, uh, of course, all the light are, uh, you know, photochromic means something colorless to color, right? That's what you are talking about. Of course, uh, see, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the photovoltaic technology, either it's a silicon solar cell or thin film solar cell that is second generation solar cells or third generation solar cell or whatever I'm talking about. Whether like, you know, for example, polymer solar cell, disensitized solar cell, perovskite solar cell, quantum dot solar cells, you know, all these things are having common, you know, kind of uh, mechanism. For example, silicon solar cell, they talk about PN junction. Whereas the mechanism for all the third generation photovoltaics is slightly different. Uh, and uh, one of the active component of all these, any photovoltaic technology is the light absorbing material. Okay. If you talk uh, silicon, if you can look at the, you know, you can look at the uh, absorption property of silicon, it's very good. And it has its own property. People talk about, you know, uh, I, I know maybe somebody from physics can, uh, physics, physics background can have. There are materials called direct band gap or indirect band gap materials. Even though silicon is indirect band gap materials, and people are trying to make a direct band gap material, uh, you know, by engineering, you know, to do some modification of the silicon itself. By doing so, what we, we can do is that we can really reduce the thickness of the device. Okay. Uh, of course, we come to thin film technology. A lot of inorganic materials are available for the light absorbing thing. But the photochromic dyes, yes. There are a lot of, of course, the photochromic, uh, I cannot say the light absorbing material is crucial for every photo technology. Of course, you know, I can tell you one thing, there are even in the satellites and everything, uh, they have a lot, of, a lot of solar cell technology, they can go up to 46 to 50 percent. But then, uh, they can use it in the space technology rather than on routine purposes. Uh, of course, uh, I think a lot of technologies are available already. Yeah, they have made the prototypes in G24 with a company in UK. They already have, yeah, you know, that whatever I'm talking about, the ice solar cell, it comes with a backpack. So you can, when you are walking, you can charge your cell phone or computer, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, there are technologies available. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all for today. Okay. Let me give the vote of thanks. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to one and all present here. Honorable Dr. J. Nithyananda, most respected principal, respected HOD, all the staffs of chemistry department, and all the participants. It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a word of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of the Department of Chemistry, Chicken and Barn College, extend a very hearty word of thanks to our respected and most distinguished speaker of the day, Dr. J. Nithyananda, senior scientist, NCL Pune for making an excellent and interesting presentation on exciting photochemistry. It has really excited our mind and focused towards the interesting things about photochemistry. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your interesting and thought-provoking lecture. I would like to express our profound gratitude to our principal, Dr. C. V. Deepa, for providing encouragement and support. Thank you, ma'am. I would also like to thank our beloved HOD, Dr. J. Rajababa, who is the backbone of this webinar for his untiring guidance and zeal in coordinating with us in all the events. Thank you so much, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, an event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling few weeks ago. It requires planning and a bird's eye for details. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues. I would like to thank the organizer, Dr. S. P. Rajasan and Dr. P. Vijayan, and all the professors from the Department of Chemistry. Finally, the wonderful participants who have turned up in such a great numbers from all over India. Thank you so much for your cooperation.
we thank you for being with us this afternoon it has been a great pleasure ladies and gentlemen once again i want to state that we are all most grateful to all who worked the whole heartedly for making making this webinar a grand success thank you very much thank you one thank you sir. thank you thank you very much all of you and stay safe this pandemic situation yeah yes thank you sir i'm going to end up the session sir thank you very much please okay